Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. I'm a little late to the party but in this video we're looking at the B-Link ME Mini that's been created in partnership with Crucial, the guys that make RAM, storage, all of that sort of stuff. Now first impressions, I really wanted to review this device because there's not really much on the market that's like this, plus I've just been covering NASA's and also the N150 from Intel which this device features. It's probably the smallest, coolest, really well built mini NAS that I've ever seen, so I'm really excited to tell you more about it. Usual disclaimer, this device was sent to me, no money changed hands and there is no control over the narrative in this video. So starting with an overview of the actual device and a teardown, you unscrew the bottom, annoyingly there's some rubber grommets on the bottom, but once you've got that off you're presented with this awesome little form factor where basically everything's encased in the heatsink. You can see that we've got Wi-Fi on one side, we've got three NVMEs on the next, we've actually got the power supply on the back with also the RJ45 ports, and then on the final side, the remaining three NVMe slots. Now, it is important to note that not all of those are the same speed. We'll come to that in a minute. In the middle is a fan that connects basically and cools down all of the heat sink, which I haven't heard any noise from throughout operation. So there's a lot to take in in that teardown video, and I want to give some initial thoughts on this device before we actually go through the specification on their website, and I can give you some more granular feedback specific to the actual internals. Now you might be thinking, why is this thing got six NVMe drives and it's only got dual 2.5 gigabit NICs? That's a good question, and yeah, obviously you're not going to get the full performance of those drives, but at the same time, that's kind of not what it's designed for, especially when it comes in at this price point. You've also got to bear in mind that actually even at NVMe three times one speeds, the IOPS per second is going to be significantly better than your traditional hard drive. And with the prices of NVMe's coming down considerably over the years, it's putting it now more in a ballpark with SSDs. Sure, I would say if you still want large bulk storage, this obviously isn't the device for you. But if you want a small form factor PC that's extremely low powered, there aren't thermal issues, it's practically silent, you should definitely consider this device. Anyway, let's head over to the product page and let's have a more thorough deep dive into what's actually in here and why this thing is configured the way it is. Now the device comes in two flavors. The one that you just saw on screen was actually this one here, which comes with the two terabyte crucial SSD, hence part of that partnership. You can obviously opt to go for the non-crucial version. The crucial version is at 329 and the non-crucial is at 209. So if you've already got a number of drives lying around or you can find a two terabyte one cheaper elsewhere, you've got that flexibility. They're also shipping to a number of territories so you can pick the right one, make sure you get the right plug adapter. The three colors that are available, you can see are the midnight gray, um, this sort of turquoisey peacock blue and the white one which was sent to me. One of the most important things to call out about this device is it does come with only 12 gigabytes of LDDR5 and that is soldered onto the motherboard. So you're not gonna be able to upgrade that. So if you're thinking of having this as say an all-in-one, do bear in mind that you've got that 12 gigabyte limit. That's probably gonna be fine as I demonstrated in my last video for maybe installing something like a bare bones Proxmox and having a few LXCs running, but your mileage really is restricted in terms of having this as a all-in-one server. But again, you probably wouldn't wanna do that because this has only got that N150, which I demoed in the last video and you'll see in this video when I put it through its paces in Cinebench. It is a very low powered, efficient budget chip. One thing that you might not have noticed in this teardown is actually you can see in this picture here, the power supply unit is actually built straight into it. So there's no heavy brick that has to come out. You simply connect it with a power cable, that's it. There's 64 gigabytes of EMCC memory on there that you can take advantage of as well if you wanted to install the operating system directly to that and actually save the NVMe slot. When I do my tests later, this device does come with Windows 11 Pro on it and that is actually installed onto that NVMe drive. It would be interesting to know how much of the cost is actually absorbed through a Windows 11 Pro license and it is a bit of an interesting choice to put Windows 11 Pro on here when if you're running a NAS you're possibly going to be putting true NAS, Unraid or maybe even Proxmox on here so the inclusion of Windows isn't really a factor when you're considering this purchase. As mentioned there's two and a half gigabit ports on here, there are two of them. The maximum realistic speed is only going to be two and a half gigabits per second anyway but you could have two people running that at the same time. The drives as I'll show later on because of that PCI 3x1 actually cap out at just under one gigabyte per second. 
In total, the device supports 24 terabytes of storage. That's because six drives, the maximum you can put in each one is four terabytes. As I mentioned, only slot four supports three times two. All of the rest are three times one, and that's because their N150 only has nine PCIe lanes. If we look at the actual I.O. on this device, you'll see on the front that we've got type C and traditional type A, 10 gigabit USB ports, both running USB 3. On the back, we have a USB 2 port, probably ideal if you've got a peripheral like a mouse or a keyboard. We've got the power adapters. We've got the two 2.5 gigabit ports. Those are I226-Vs. These are Intel NICs, which is good to see. And we've got a HDMI port as well that caps out at 4K 60 FPS. The full specification of the device is up on screen now, but let's now head over and look at some benchmarks that I ran on this device. All of the benchmarks in this review were performed on Windows on the default installation, so that's reflective of what you're going to get out of the box, but also I didn't really see much point in installing other operating systems on here because Windows can already max out the peripherals on here, i.e. we're already getting up to the full saturation of PCI 3 times 2 and we're also getting the full performance out of the NIC and I can't see that changing with any other operating system. So to test drive this device, I basically plugged in the power cable and thankfully that power supply is inside the device so all you need is a simple cable added the HDMI and then we were off to the default installation process for Windows which as you can see on screen this booted straight into the Windows setup. I didn't have any issues during the setup process it behaved exactly as I would expect and by the end of that process I was dumped into the Windows startup screen just like you would expect. Once I was in Windows, I performed an update just to make sure that these benchmarks are reflective of current Windows formats. This is using Windows 11 Pro, and I think it was 24H2. Now, the first real indicator of performance was actually running those Windows updates. It pegged the CPU, that N150, at 100%, and you could see that the temperatures still remained under control. There was no thermal throttling here. We maxed out at around the 56 degrees mark, which did increase when I put additional load through with something like Cinebench. But under normal operating, if you're going to be maxing out this CPU, you really don't need to worry about performance issues and overheating, which might be useful if you're running this as a server and doing some basic things, say, for example, some Plex transcoding, which the iGPU in the CPU is more than capable of doing and I've demonstrated in previous videos. Importantly as well, and thanks to that massive heatsink, the NVMe drive never exceeded 50C through normal operations. Cinebench was a bit of a different story and probably the most important thing about the Cinebench test was the fact that the performance of this CPU seems to be below other N150 devices. Now I scratched my head a little around this because I couldn't really figure out what that was. The thermals all looked okay so I can only think that this is something to do with maybe other devices in the machine, something maybe on the motherboard, I'm not really sure I'll have to dig into it more but the N150 was below other devices that are out there and other benchmarks that I did see. Thankfully, during any of the performance tests I did, hitting it with Cinebench as hard as I could, I didn't witness any thermal throttling like I have done in other N150 devices. So good job on that one, B-Link, but I can't understand where the missing performance has gone. In hardware info, you can see we've confirmed the 12 gigabytes of TDR5 RAM, and you can also see in the bottom right, we've got that NVMe running at times two in PCIe Gen 3, giving us a maximum theoretical throughput of about two gigabytes per second. Speaking of disk performance and that drive in that slot, which is running Windows, we got about 1,700 megabytes per second in reads and 1,621 in sequential writes. Importantly, the random, which I mentioned earlier around IOPS, is significantly higher than what you would see on a standard HDD. That's why using NVMe drives, even when they're not at their full capacity, could be beneficial to your performance. As you can see in the bottom right, the maximum temperature for these drives was 74 degrees, which is a little bit toasty, but that is during an intensive read and write cycle and typical performance, you're not gonna be seeing those figures through normal use. So where do I land on this device? Hopefully by now, it's probably not gonna be a surprise to say that I really like this device and I think it's great that B-Link have done a good job on their first entry into the NAS space. If you're looking for an extremely compact device, with decent network connectivity, 
low power consumption. This thing was pulling around six to 10 watts during normal operation with one drive. And other reviews I've seen, I haven't tested this with six drives, but it falls into sort of below 30 watts with all drives populated and some decent benchmarking going on at the same time. When I put two or three NVMe drives in, that's all I had to test with at the time, I peaked at around 15 to 18 watts max during some benchmark tests. Now, if you're a prosumer, you're probably not gonna be interested in this device. You will probably want more storage space, which you're probably only gonna get with hard disk drives, which is just not even in consideration for this device. But if you want something small, discreet, low powered, low noise, then this could be a perfect choice for you. The NVMe drives, whilst you're not gonna get the full speed of them, either through the NIC or the PCI Gen 3 connectivity, you are gonna get decent IOPS performance, which is gonna be considerably faster than your typical hard disk drive performance. When you combine all of this and a price point of around $300 or $200, if you're getting the one without the disk drive, I think it's an absolute steal. There's nothing really on the market that offers you this much flexibility and this performance at this price. So let me know what you think about this device in the comments below. It will be releasing shortly. Is this something that you're gonna add into your home lab and why are you gonna add it? As always, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.